let's go see the team. Barely oh. older than a child at a hundred and some odd years old, says the video game. Oh, damn. I forgot about that. Well. Uh, so did literally everyone, it seems. <laughs> so, but go on. We've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. You know what I mean, Rex. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought I was important. I'll decide what's important. Now tell me how you know Saren. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. Damn. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. Damn. Bounce before getting paid. Didn't even ask for like a partial paycheck Something or something. Up. Damn. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Whose ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. Oh, the piss bags. Of course. Once one of their ships blows up, that area of space is <laughs> cannot be entered for thousands of years. <laughs> Just a big brown and yellow patch in space. <laughs> the Volus Nebula. Don't attack the Volus. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead oh within my a God. week. Every damn one. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. Same oh, okay, that's the same None stuff. of us are interested in staying in our own. So long, Rex. Shepard. Shepard. Liara's locker. She's got a locker. Let's need to find her. Bam. So, fucking spoilers. <laughs> but there she is. Mm -hmm. Game just decided to straight up. Here you go. Be like, yeah, there she is. Yep. Gonna fight. She's on the team. So, um. They should have probably kept that locked at least for until like until you talk to her for like something. a second, you know. But uh, yes, um, yes, uh, specialties. Mm -hmm. Biotic. So you're not really gonna get anything special with weapon proficiencies. Let's see, she's all about the space Jedi shit. All right, we'll equip you when the time comes. Just wanted to see what uh, what this was all about. Pistol. Yeah. Once you look at her um, her upgrades, you know you'll see the the, the different uh, 
paths you can you can go for. But uh, you know, you're you're doing um, all your all your all your Jedi um, abilities are are. Uh, she's your heavy concentration Commander, for that support stuff. We have a minute to talk. <laughs> no, I, I I got time. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. More like more like a rotating door. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy. Well, but, leave me alone. Uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? What do you mean? They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies. At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We... humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. <sighs> Girl, I know you've said some things out back in the streets, but you need to chill, okay? Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. That's not the kind of thinking that'll put a good... Uh, how should I say? You know, ambiance between the races, you know, the relations. If you think like that, they're always going to be poisoned. Don't be so cynical. You know? It's a leap of faith, in a way. Hmm. You've got a pessimistic view of the universe, yeah, Williams. Yeah, more like rapport. A pessimist is yeah. what an optimist calls a realist. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. Hmm. This is an Alliance warship, not the Parliament floor. If you're Earth first, vote for the Terra Firma party. Terra Firma is a pack of jackals. The Founders had ideals. These days, they just play off xenophobia and bigotry. <laughs> oh. I hope my reasons are more rational. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, sir. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. Ah. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. Guess you make a habit of second guessing your superiors. I no, sir. <laughs> That's right. Those options got hostile. I come from a military family too. My parents were both Navy. Anybody in your family we might know? Couldn't say, Commander. We probably have a lot in common. You join up to carry on the tradition? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, a lot of options. Probably not the action I'm thinking about. No. The future of humanity is out here. There's so much we haven't seen yet. Oh, you're not down yeah. with the trad? I still remember my first field exercise on Titan. When we hit mud, the reality hit me. I'm the first person who ever stood here. Then my drill instructor kicked me in the ass. I went face first into the muck. He spent the next five minutes chewing me out for gold bricking. Gold bricking? Don't tell me you had Gunny Ellison. <laughs> He's the only one I know who uses that word to describe shirking duty. Oh, Lord. You went to the Makapog boot camp, too? Yeah. Gunny Ellison's still reaming out recruits down there. Kicking ass and using words like inveigle and pusillanimous. <laughs> All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. <laughs> but this is a multilateral mission. Down You're the middle? have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. Good girl. 
Would you kiss anyone I ordered you to? That depends, sir. If you ordered me to kiss a superior officer, that would be a violation of the regs concerning fraternization. <laughs> that would make it an illegal order. I'd be required to decline and relieve you of command. <laughs> sir. Well, you know, if I was to lose my mind, someone would have to take over the chain of command. You know? And then it wouldn't be an infraction, would it now? What's your opinion on the Horrible last flirting volley there. <laughs> not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? You played badminton. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean... Just, she had a problem. I was like, let's find solutions. Well. Mm -hmm. What kind of problem? Well, clearly the only thing on her mind is the chain of command, you know? Okay. Okay, gotcha. I mean, I want to kiss me too. No problem. Uh, do they make clones in this universe? I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her mom not talking. They're family, right? Uh, she that did. is a bit suspicious. She did She did uh, say, I don't fucking know about Benezia. Leave yeah. me alone. Yeah. Fuck that bitch. Shut up. What? <laughs> You know what, Ashley? I'll... Yeah, maybe. No! Sometimes you hate your family. It's fine. I think she's being straight with us. Or at least, I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Was that everything? What's your opinion on the last I'm not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story Here. about her and her mom okay. not... I think she's being... Too bad those ruins got destroyed. All right. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. Hell yeah. Looking forward to it. Good response. There you go. So now you got to meet her a little bit more. And, um... You know, poor buddy's perfect, you know. Um, nerfect, you mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's that's perfect. even better. You're right? That's even better. Is that's that great? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Two layers to that one. There you go. Damn. Okay. Well. Um, yeah. So. So. Uh, uh, anyway, you're me. You're a, you're a grown ass man. You're a grown ass commander, mm -hmm. and um, you can, you know. Make your decisions and form your own opinions about things. Um, did I utter a word during that conversation to push you one way or another? No. Have you? Have you? Have you? No, I'm in control. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. I was good. not influenced by. Just you. verifying. Yeah. No, that's just good. Wanna, I just want to make sure. That's good. I just want to confirm. Are, are you trying to... What, was I not creepy enough? What's going on? No, no, no. Okay. Just, uh... Just to check in. You know, just to check in. <laughs> Somewhere in the far distance, the sound of panties being twisted into oblivion. Ooh. Hypergravitational just, it, wedgies. There's a sound. There's a sound of that twist. I see. It gets louder. I see. All right, Garrus. Come on. How are you? Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Is this new? Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. Hmm. That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger for the same reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military. A thousand? I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. 
no offense. Unlimited power, no accountability. I mean, that's a pretty respectable train of thought. That's what space needs. Mm -hmm. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. Yeah. Saren's not going to play by our rules, CSEC's rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. This is interesting because it's legitimately a question about how do you feel about uh, what? How do you feel about lawful good versus chaotic good? Yeah, me being above the law and like being a shit about. Yeah, it. it's an earnest question, and I'm, and I'm, you know, play it how you really would. I'm trying to be decent, you know. I'm trying to play by the rules. Which is, number one, there are no rules. So. Or more like there are rules, but they don't apply. <laughs> different perspectives, different point of views. What will I tell Garrus? Rule number one, do not stick the tip into a mass accelerator. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> it felt great. <laughs> Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. I see what you mean, but... I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. Thank you. Looking for supplies? Not really. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. You betcha. Yeah, Garrus is interesting. His dad was a... A man of order and he too is a man of order but he understands that some situations orders fail and you gotta get it done however you can I got a lot more money this time you do you made a lot of money off of those planets yeah. and completing main uh, major missions gives you uh, giant rewards so you can spend uh, indeed here and uh, you've got shopping elsewhere as well. Elsewhere as well, yeah. But yeah. Um, remember that he has a rotating stock uh, too. Officers. Oh, hello, Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's too much. That's too much, Bob. That's too much, Drew. Just the slightest, like, oh, hello. Oh. What? <laughs> Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place the normandy runs so smooth it feels like we're not even moving and the engines are so quiet how do you sleep at night oh do you need a fan or something mm -hmm. to make noise in the room mm -hmm. to fall asleep with tv on uh-huh the silence wakes you up back on the flotilla the last thing you want to hear is silence it means an engine's died or an air filter shut down mm -hmm. i guess you don't have to worry about that here but old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Hmm. You don't need them. I need my crew to be in top form. I can't have you daydreaming about going home. Don't worry, Shepard. I know what's at stake. If we don't stop Saren, I won't have a home to go back to. I'll be ready when you need me. Just put on some reruns of Seinfeld and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be good. Harsh. Growing up, I would put uh, Fresh Prince, but I don't know if that flies anymore. Uh, we've already had these discussions, so I guess goodbye. I should go. 
See you later. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> what a shutdown. Dude, don't think about your, your people. You're here now. That's, that's all there is to it. Again, there's the sentiment, and then there's the delivery system. Once again, every interaction has two aspects to yep. it. Yep. Something I can do for you, Commander. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I probably... My last assignment yeah, was okay. on the Toki. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Nothing here. Hey, uh... Where's the new girl? Red's like, fuck this, I can't see her face. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this entire arc. <laughs> I mean... Sometimes not seeing the face adds a little some something. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you two sessions ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know she needed the mask to live, and like, how how was I supposed to know? Officer, we've got a new requisition here. It's a double brown paper bag. <laughs> yes, Commander. Is there something you need? Are there holes in the bags? Eh, if the, the holes in the bags creates a security risk. Oh, higher higher armor rating if they if there's no holes. Oh. I was gonna ask for the number of holes, but I guess I don't even need to go there. Just start the conversation for the yeah, love of God. Sure. Um, personal question. Serving on an alliance ship. I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe, too secure. Yeah, I yeah, wanted to yeah. travel the stars, but humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Ah! You want to save it? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. Up left. Brackets. <laughs> lie. <laughs> You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. You say that... until you see Mom's cleavage. <laughs> What? Then what? Trust me. Okay, it's all about trust. I'd like to talk about you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. You're right. That doesn't sound very interesting. <laughs> On occasion, I have run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumbled across small bands of privateers. That probably does not seem very exciting to someone like you. I guess seeking out history's lost secrets holds a special appeal for me. I would give a century of my life to discover a beacon like the one you found on Eden Prime. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. <laughs> Reggie unveils the, the latest, brand new, the NEG system. <laughs> An upgrade to the REG system. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No, I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. <laughs> JK. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. 
Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. You're so clumsy. Alright, tell me about your mama. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Huh. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. Oh. Do you know why I Benezia don't understand. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Any chance she's in this for power or personal gain? No, not the Benezia I knew. But I hadn't spoken with my mother in many years. She may have changed. People do change. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council. And we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. USB A, B, C, lightning port, SATA, printer, game port. What do we got? VGA, mm -hmm. DVI. DVI. Huh. I don't understand. Your species can HDMI. Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the union. How do you the do it? true connection is mental. Whoa. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. What's what's up? <laughs> wow. Aliens have weird names for one night stands. <laughs> Everything's everyone's different. Everyone is different. All circumstances are unique. Yeah. That one's got a coaxial cable. <laughs> Twisting it in the back. Put the antennas up. Still works. It'll work. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. <gasps> <laughs> you can do that! <laughs> wow! I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our homeworld. Union with our own kind is no longer common, not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. It ain't spicy enough. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood, though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word wow. to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Go out and seek the spice! Need that mix going. Keeping it too trad is boring <laughs> and lame and terrible and nothing will be gained. <laughs> Don't preserve shit. 
Make it interesting. Maybe she wanted to meet you, but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Oh, yeah, of course. Guess who's coming to dinner? Another Asari? Fucking boo! <laughs> <laughs> Give me one of them humans. Though. They defeated the time cube, man. That's how they did it. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia is? She rarely oh, no, we spoke that. of her partner. Though I Do that. It is possible Benezia's partner would- Don't know that. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. That's beautiful. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. Yes. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Damn. Yeah? <laughs> Damn, girl. <laughs> Everything fleeting? Now and then. Temporary. <laughs> yeah. I, I can get behind that. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's great. Yep, yep. All right, well, it was nice speaking with you. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Welcome to the fleet, Liara. Somewhere across space and time, in an isolated Isola, a man standing on top of a bridge with a protest nearby has his head explode <laughs> under the sheer gravity of the conversation that just took place. <laughs> so you're saying your race has to mix as much as possible on principle? <laughs> Not bad. Oh God, he's dead. Measure head is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Salute. That was good. <laughs> okay, so we went all around the ship. Just a picture of Measurehead's portrait, like with massive copium breaths. <laughs> Seething. <laughs> oh, I got so many things to read. Okay, all right. You ready? Um, I guess it's Asari? Yep. Sure. Because of their long lifespan, Asari tend to have a long view not common in other races. When they encounter a new species or situation, the Asari are more comfortable with an experienced per period of passive observation and study than immediate action. They are unfazed that some of their investments or decisions may not pay off for decades or centuries. Matriarch can seem to make incomprehensible decisions, but their insight is evident when their carefully laid plans come to fruition. In interstellar relations, this long view manifests in an unspoken policy of centrism. The Asari instinctively seek to maintain stable balances of economic, political, and military power. Traditionally, Asari spread their influence through cultural domination and intellectual superiority. They invite new species of advanced development to join the galactic community, knowing that their ideals and beliefs will inevitably influence the existing culture. Cultural domination. <laughs> uh, what a race. Gotta get everywhere. Yep. Take power how you, how you can get it. Do your thing. What's your specialty? Okay, that's how we're doing it. <laughs> I'm adaptable. Done and done. You know, Flexibility. Jack of all trades. All master of none. Hey, hey, forget about that second part. You know, all good. There you go. Yeah. Interesting race, though. Very cool. You know? Very In cool. Interesting, interesting race. Um, I like the philosophy. Yeah, I mean, like, if it's it's... 
It's just another way of like, like we had the Alcor conversation of sorts, and it's just like, what's another way that you can survive to the point of becoming, um, you know, uh, a, a spacefaring race? And it's like flexibility and adaptability beyond all fathomable, all fathomable measure. Yeah, you know, like we have to integrate from the outside in order to like improve and like any idea of like keeping things the way they are and not improving is frowned upon yeah. Asari are water and I am thirsty um Turians culture you said while it Turians are I can take this one sure thank while you. Turians are individuals with personal desires their instincts uh <laughs> their instincts is excuse me their instinct is to equate the self with the group and set aside personal desires for the good of all. Turians are taught to have a strong sense of personal accountability, the Turian honor that other races find so remarkable. Turians are taught to own every decision they make, good or ill, with the worst sin they can make in the eyes of their people is to lie about their own actions. Turians who murder will try to get away with it, but if they but if directly questioned, most will confess the crime. Turians have a strong inclination towards public service and self-sacrifice, so they tend to be poor entrepreneurs. To compensate, they accepted the mercantile Volus as a client race, offering protection in exchange for their fiscal expertise. The Turian military is the center of their society. It is not just an armed force, it is an all-encompassing public works organization. The military police are also the civic police. The fire brigades serve the civilian population as well as the military facilities. The Corps of Engineers builds and maintains spaceports, schools, water pur purification plants, and power stations. The merchants, the merchant marine ensures that all worlds get needed resources. Mm, okay. So they have some kind of honor. Yeah. Just not all of them. Turian L.A. Noir is like a 10 minute game <laughs> <laughs> who did it <laughs> i did i did it oh well, all right then. Da -da -da -da! <laughs> case solved <laughs> uh Turian's military doctrine although they like the brutality of the krogan the skill of the asari and the virtuosity of the humans the Turian military has formidable discipline officers and ncos are lifers with years of field experience enlisted personnel are thoroughly th trained and stay calm under fire Turian units don't break even if their entire line collapses they fall back in order setting ambushes as they go a popular saying holds you will only see a Turian's back once he's dead Boot camp begins on the 15th birthday. Soldiers receive a year of training before being assigned to a field unit. Officers train for even longer. Most serve until the age of 30, at which point they become part of the reserves. Even if they suffer injuries preventing frontline service, most do support work behind the lines. Biotics are uncommon. While admired for their exacting, exacting skills, biotics motives are not always fully trusted by the common soldier. The Turians prefer to assign their biotics to specialist teams called cabals. Command and control is decentralized and flexible. Individual squads can call for artillery and air support. They make extensive use of combat drones for light duties and practice combined arms. Um, infantry operates with armor, supported by overhead gunships. Strategically, they are metho methodical and patient and dislike risky operations. Tradition is important. Each legion has a full-time staff of historians who chronicle its battle honors in detail. The oldest have records dating back to the Iron Age, the Turian Iron Age. If a legion is destroyed in battle, it is reconstituted rather than replaced. The Turians recruit auxiliary units from conquered or absorbed minor races. Auxiliaries are generally light infantry or armored cavalry units that screen and support the main Turian formations. At the conclusion of their service in the auxiliaries, recruits are granted Turian citizenships. There you go. A full-on race of Sagats and Wamus. Mm -hmm. The second-in-command bad guy that's yeah. Still honorable to the end. Get conquered or join us. Like the like the Mongols a bit. 
Is that what uh, Genghis Khan was doing? And yeah, to some degree, and 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 did have a system of like, if if you're a badass, you will get promoted through the ranks. Um, but you know, as long as you're cool with, uh, just wanton amounts of baby murder, <laughs> like nonstop in a wave across the. Whoops. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, extinct races. Uh, was it this? Uh, the beacon, I believe, yes. The beacon was a Prothean artifact unearthed on an alliance colony of Eden Prime. Its resemblance to the Prothean data banks recovered on Mars provoked immediate interest from the Alliance and Citadel Council. It proved to be a solid state storage device, data storage device, uh, part of the galaxy spanning comm network similar to the modern extranet. In Intact Prothean paleo technology is rare. The beacon seems to promise another quantum leap of technology, akin to the discovery of the Mass Effect drive and relays. Unfortunately, the beacon also drew the attention of the rogue Spectre Saren, Ar Arturius, and his synthetic allies, the Geth. A dawn raid by his flagship Sovereign s resulted in hundreds of civilian casualties. The beacon was badly damaged. The motives behind the attack are still being investigated. During the recovery operation, the beacon fired a pulse of energy at the executive officer of the Alliance Frigate Normandy. Lieutenant Commander Shepard survived and appears to have suffered no ill effects. Afterwards, the beacon fell inert. The mechanics appear to be dead. The mechanism appears to be dead. Okay. Thank you for that. Humanity and the Alliance, the Systems Alliance. Uh, Terra Firma Party. Terra Firma is an alliance political party formed after the first contact war. Its policy agenda is based on the principle that Earth must stand firm against alien influences. This covers a variety of legislation. Recent activities by Terra Firma include opposition to a law <laughs> include opposition to a law requiring high school alien language study. A proposal to increase tariffs on alien imports and leading a popular movement to mark the first contact war with a public holiday. What, you watch your kids learning that bullshit? <laughs> you watch your kids learning that fucking garbage? Too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> Too close to home right now. I don't need this shit. <laughs> what number is that space bill? Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Though founded by well-meaning individuals who feared the submersion of native human cultures under a wave of alien vogue, Terra Firma's agenda attracts many jingoists and xenophobes. Damn. Lofis. <laughs> Tabarnak. <laughs> Fuck. How are you gonna hit so close to home? Space. <laughs> <laughs> Light years from Earth, wherever you go, there you are. All right, you can't yep. dodge it. You can't dodge it. But the children, what are they learning? What are you all? What are you teaching my kids? Well, they're gonna be able to interact with other people out there, you know? Why? <laughs> what do you mean, people? <laughs> Where are the only people around here? Just this. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Alright. Terra Firma. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright. Gagarin Station is the largest deep space station built by humanity. A Bernal sphere design with a 500 meter diameter habitable area. It was constructed beyond Pluto, nearly 80 astronomical units, 12 billion kilometers, from Sol. Moving crew and material to this location bankrupted most of the backers. Gagarin was placed at the inner edge of the heliopause, the point at which the solar wind can no longer push back the interstellar medium. It was built to test a number of faster than light drive principles that theoretically could only occur in interstellar space. The station was nicknamed Jump Zero as it was intended to be the jumping off point for humanity's expansion into the galaxy. Shortly after the station was completed, the Prothean runes were discovered on Mars, rendering the entire effort moot. 
After struggling to make a profit for a decade, Gagarin was sold to the Systems Alliance in 2159 for a fraction of its construction costs. The Alliance refurbished it as a research and training center for the recently discovered biotic phenomenon. In 2169, the Biotic Acclimation and Training Program was shut down by and Gagarin became a general research facility. Its remote location and intentional isolation from the extranet makes it popular for dangerous research, particularly in the field of artificial intelligence. Humanity's first stable AI, the Alliance-sponsored ELISA, achieved sapience at Gagarin in 2172. Today, Gagarin Station has a permanent population of approximately 9,000. A plan has been proposed to move it to the gravitationally stable Paris center point between Pluto and Caron Relay, allowing it to serve as a gateway facility between the Sol and Arcturus systems. The high cost of safely moving its mass has delayed this inf indefinitely. The angriest, loudest terra firma, terra, terra firma, terra firma uh, leaves the rally and goes back home and shuts the door and draws the blinds and all you hear is the sound of fapping and the bluest glow coming from underneath the door. <laughs> the brightest blue glow. Nobody must know about this. Right? Get that VPN going. When it's, it, it's so blue. You've never seen more blue. <laughs> Draw the blind. Shut up. All right. Uh, FTL drive chain charge. A positive as positive and negative electric current is passed through FTL drive core. Drive core. An FTL drive core. Uh, it acquires a static electric charge. Drives can be operated uh, an average of fifty hours before they reach charge saturation. This change is proportional to the magnitude of mass reduction. A heavier or faster ship reaches saturation more quickly. If the charge is allowed to build, the core will discharge into the hull of the ship, uh, of a ship. Uh, all ungrounded crew members are fried to a crisp, all electronic systems are burned out, and metal bulkheads may be melted and fused together. The safest way to discharge a core uh, is to land on a planet and establish a connection to the ground. Like a lightning rod, larger vessels, like dreadnoughts, cannot land and must discharge into a planetary magnetic field. The ship passes the charge from the drive core to the exterior armored hull, then dives into the magnetic field. As the hull discharges, sheets of lightning jump away into the field, creating beautiful aural displays on the planet. The ship must retract its sensors and weapons while dumping charge to prevent damage, leaving it blind and helpless. Discharging at a moon with a weak magnetic field can take days. Discharging into the powerful field of a gas giant may require less than an hour. Deep space facilities, such as the Citadel, often have special discharge facilities for visiting ships. That is awesome. If you're small, you can land on a planet and and uh, let it all loose, but if you're a dreadnought, you gotta take it to an actual uh, magnetic field yeah. and just discharge there. Okay. Space combat, combat endurance. Heat limits the length and intensity of ship-to-ship -ship combat. Starships generate enormous heat when they fire high-energy weapons, perform maneuvering burns, and run on combat onboard combat electronics. In combat, warships produce heat more quickly than they can disperse it. As heat builds within a vessel, the crewed spaces become increasingly uncomfortable. Before the heat reaches lethal levels, a ship must win or retreat by entering FTL. After an FTL run, the ship halts, shuts down non-essential systems, and activates the heat radiation gear. Combat endurance varies by ship design and by the battle's location. Battles in the deep cold of interstellar space can go on for some time. Engagements close to a star are brief. Since habitable worlds are usually close to a star, battles over them are frantic. Okay. Uh, heat management. Dispersal of heat generated by onboard systems is a critical issue for a ship. If it cannot deal with heat, the crew may be cooked within the hull. Radiation is the only way to shed heat in a vacuum. Civilian vessels utilize large, fragile radiator panels that are impossible to armor. Warships use diffuse radiator arrays, DRA, ceramic strips along the exterior of the armored hull. 
These make the ship appear striped to thermographic sensors. Since the arrangement of the strips depends on the internal configuration of the ship, the patterns of each vessel are unique and striking. On older ships, the DRA strips could become red or white hot, dubbed tiger stripes or war paint by humans. The glowing DRA has a psychological impact on pirates and irregular forces. Ship radiators are not as efficient as panels, but if damaged by enemy fire, the ship only loses a small portion of its total radiation capacity. In most cases, a vessel's DRA alone allows it to cruise with no difficulties. Operating deep within a solar system can cause problems. A ship engaged in combat can produce titanic amounts of heat from maneuvering burns and weapon fire. When fighting in a high heat environment, warships employ high efficiency droplet heat sinks. In a droplet system, Tanks of liquid sodium or lithium absorb heat within the ship. The liquid is vented from spray nozzles near the bow as a thin sheet of millions of microcenter, uh, micrometer scale droplets. The droplets are caught in the st at the stern and recycled into the system. A droplet system can sink 10 to 100 times as much heat as DRA strips. Droplet sheets resemble a surface. Ships wake through the water. The wake peels out uh, in, sh of, in sharp turns, spreading a fan of droplets as the ship changes vectors and leaves the coolant behind. We wanted to create a cool effect of energy floating off of the ship as they move through space, and we need a really good explanation for it, so here you go. <laughs> we want cool trails. Yeah. Shut up. Uh, yeah, we've seen that. I don't know if we've seen that. Yes. Guardian, yes. we have. And technology. Biotics training. Biotic implants and amplifiers only provide the potential to create coherent mass effect fields. Whether biotics can actually do so is largely determined by their training. Biotics must develop conscious control over their nervous systems, sending specific electrical impulses to the element zero nodule embedded in their nerves. They are taught to use their implants and amps with biofeedback devices and physical mnemonics. Uh, specific gestures or muscle movements fire the proper sequence of nerves to activate a certain skill. Kodatics Industries pioneered, the bionic, pioneered bionic training with the Biotic Acclimation and Temperance Training Program. Though BAT did not achieve the desired results, many techniques taught are still used today. Many human think, th think tanks are trying to develop some form of biotic super soldier. Most are benign efforts to create more flexible troops. Others, less publicly known, are unapologetic attempts to create Nietzschean supermen. Unapologetic? But worth it, though, right? Yeah, it's to help, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okie doke. <laughs> uh, cool. So, you um, have taken care of uh, finding Liara. Uh, you can take on other of the the other main missions you've been given. You can explore other things in the system. Um, you can also uh, return to Citadel at any point. Yeah, um, we've got a few people to talk to, right? Uh, well, back at back at Citadel there are, but like you can... Um, uh, just, I don't know if you wanted to like clean up what was in that system or not, but um, that's a possibility yeah. too. Um, yeah, let's go back to the Greeks. Uh huh. Oh, that's because that's where my ship is, or yeah. something? Okay. This is just an asteroid belt. Mm -hmm. I 
I mean, are we supposed to go back there or just zoom out and we're good? Oh, well, I mean, there the um, Artemis Tau has, again, the four different systems. Yeah. All right, so there's only Athens left. Take a look. Going in. Whoa. Okay, there we go. All right, what do we have? Salamis. Furthest point from the sun, Pharos. The St. Pharos has seen only a cursory examination by an unmanned probe. It has a trace atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. Its surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of carbon. Deeper craters have been partly filled with by ice, suggesting there, suggesting there may be a significant amount of water locked up beneath its frozen surface. A large ice-bright crater in the southern hemisphere makes the planet visible from the inner system, leading to the planet's name. Turian insignia recovered. Scans of the planet Pharos revealed an abandoned base on its moon. The recon team found nothing of interest, but much of the debris was marked with a Magna colony insignia. Alright. Then... Circe. Circe is a modestly sized hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sulfur and chlorine. These give it a striking yellow-green tint. As the development of the Proteus colony continues, Cersei will likely be developed for Helium-3 mining. While scanning this giant gas, you detected a large Yay. concentration of Helium-3. Yeah. Okay. Then inner Nausicaa of the wind. Traces of sodium in the atmosphere give Nausicaa its overall dark gray color, but is it is otherwise a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. An abundance of water vapor in the upper atmosphere accounts for its white clouds. Alright. And then asteroid belt. And then Proteus. Like the Hana homeworld, Proteus has more than 90% oceanic cover. The incredible heat thrown off by, from Athens raises global humidity to 100%, creates constant cloud cover, and powers colossal typhoons that rage across the surface year-round. Hot, humid, and storm-racked, Proteus' rare combination of oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere and carbon-based biosphere nevertheless recommended for colonization. A pilot program is studying the possibility of colonies below the ocean surface, safe from the worst effects of their weather. Baba Fett is growing somewhere down there. Oh, word? Uh, bah. What's on it? Free oxygen. There you go. And then... Salamis. The geological properties of Salamis have been scanned from orbit, but little else is known about it. Due to its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and proximity to the energetic star Athens, the equatorial daytime temperatures have been known to turn the surface molten. The crust is composed of iron with deposits of platinum group metals. Okay. Alright. Cool. And that was all of it. So at this point, we just have to like return. Yeah. So your other, so the other missions of the three you were given, you were given Artemis Tau, you were given um, uh, Pharos, and the other mission was Novaria. Uh, those were the three places to go. And then uh, there's back home. And just like there are. Sometimes things to be found on planets that uh, are not on the map. Sometimes you will find locations that are in, uh, things to investigate that are also not immediately obvious. Displayed, as well. yeah. So, so it might be like selectable but not marked. There are things. There are things like that oh. out in space. Sometimes it's a big, big space world out there. Like even in there and stuff. At the solar system level. Is basically what uh, what you At might the run solar into. Solar system level, okay. Um, but yeah, anyway, don't don't worry too much about it. You, it's, it's it's not a big deal.
also at this you, level. No, like at the so this is this is this is the furthest possible from the solar system level. Do you like? Are you like like? Uh, I'm, uh, like around the sun, like at this level. Yeah, basically, yeah. But like it, again, it's it's not it's not a humongous deal. Um, Shit. Okay. Like I I saw like one, two, three, four orbits. So I just assumed that like the planets that would be visible would be fine. But now like I'm thinking about like re-exploring. Unless what I'm doing is silly right now. No. But basically, um, for example, like an asteroid belt might have something. Uh, so in, in, if you if you go looking, but not every system is going to have something like that. But some of them might. So there you go. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you. Holy shit. Oh. Okay. While scanning this asteroid field in the Artemis star cluster, you detected a large deposit of titanium. Mm-hmm. Oh man, like it's this... not a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm just you're like, overreacting. I'm just no, it's just <laughs> opening my mind yeah, to like yeah, yeah. the possibilities. It's you know? just there's stuff out there, but it's not. It's just little, little, little extras and secrets. Don't worry about it. Hidden stuff, hidden resources. It's good. Was I overreacting? Well, it, they're just collectibles. Okay. Like, because you you sounded like you're like, oh no, I'm, I have to. And it's like, no, no, no. It, it's just little finds, you know. It's it's it'll be okay. It's just but if you're worried about like critical content, you're not going to miss anything like that. But yes, you might find an asteroid. Okay. Well, right now I'm just thinking about the asteroid belts. I'm gonna try to not think about anything else. Don't uh, like oh sometimes you can go to the sun. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> don't. Uh, yeah, there you go. No need, no need to create any any goblins. Okay. But resources, cash, money, buying things, always nice. But I mean, yeah, you basically got it. It's just you might find some asteroids. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's good to know. Normandy. Alright, seems cool. So. Um, before your 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 next pick, did you feel like uh, uh, shopping and, and um, setting the crew up, or...? Inside the ship, uh, yeah, I guess I. That would be a good time. Yeah, and you got some XP for those fights, as well. Excellent. 